and welcome to another one of my videos. Uh, this is Sue. Um, today I'm going to be paint, painting Clive Myrie for the Portrait Artist of the Week series. Um, I'm only using four colours in this, so mainly three colours, um, three primaries. Um, what you'll see me here, uh, putting down here, is um, ultramarine blue. Um, and I'm just dobbing in some burnt sienna. Um, I'm also going to be using yellow ochre and cadmium red later on for the warmer colours but I'm starting off with the shaded parts. Now, this isn't how I usually do portrait, I actually got this tip from another YouTuber where she, I, I can't remember the name otherwise I would tell you, um, but they put down the ultramarine dob in the burnt sienna for a sort of a dark effect. Um, I quite like the blobby effect of watercolour. Blobby, that's the technical term. <laughs> um, you can't see very well here, but I've actually um, got a pencil drawing underneath. Well, not underneath, it's a pencil drawing which I'm painting on top of. The pencil drawing, I have to confess, was traced. I projected a picture of Clive Myrie, a um, screenshot taken from the programme, which runs every Sunday. I put it on the TV and um, turn off all the lights in the room and then I put a bit of paper over the TV and just trace around him like it's his light box. Um, I can draw, I would usually draw, but I didn't have much time. So I, um, I think with art, you've got to pick your battles, particularly if you don't have much time. And rather than practicing trying to get a likeness, I wanted to practice different watercolor techniques for this. So as you can see, I'm still carrying on um, just blobbing on the colour. I've got a little bit more detail here and you can see the eyes are a little bit darker. I'm not using black. I've never used black. I'm not using black for this. So um, that's a really concentrated version of ultramarine and burnt sienna. And the reason a lot of artists don't like to use black is that they say that it doesn't black doesn't really exist uh, in real life. Um, and it's probably true. They're in people's faces. Um, black doesn't really exist it's a sort of um, so that gives quite a nice effect um, I actually like I've, as he is here <laughs> before I put the warm colors on right so now I'm putting on the warm colors and that's a mix of cadmium red and yellow ochre so I'm just dobbing it over the top of the blue and you can see the blue doesn't change like the lines because I've left it to dry for quite some time at this point. Um, so the blue stays where it is and doesn't merge into the, to the uh, new fresh colour that I'm putting on. Um, Clive's got some highlights on his forehead and just around his cheekbone so I'm leaving those and where I've gone over them a bit too much then I, I've tried to lift off the colour. Um, so a lot of people think you can't correct mistakes with watercolour. You can to some extent. If you've gone over something that you shouldn't have with a clean, damp brush, you can try and lift off the colour. And that may work. It depends on what kind of colours you've got. Um, the colours that people buy. It depends the professional grade or the student grade. Um, it depends on whether they're staining colours. Staining colours mean that once the colour goes down on the paper you can't lift it off very easily. Other colours you can lift off easily as though and leave the white there as though you'd never made a mistake in the first place. You can actually see one of the mistakes I've made and this is later but I've uh, just by his scarf and under his um, mouth you can see his finger there, but there's a thumb underneath. I've accidentally painted blue. Um, later I realised my mistake and I try and correct it. But the mix of blue and burnt sienna doesn't lift off very easily, so I can't ever get it nice and crisp. So I did try and fix that with uh, gouache. Um, so carrying on here, um, I'm just doing a series of sort of layers. Um, I often don't have the patience for things to dry. So uh, when things aren't dry yet, I kind of take advantage of that and daub in a little bit of darker color. And that has an effect of creating a sort of wet on wet approach. So 
um, that concentrated color will merge into the you have to work that work from um, a sort of a less concentrated to more concentrated with watercolor because if you put on a less concentrated blob of color it will create a collie repel the color and you'll get um, a sort of a blob of less concentrated color there whereas if you dob on a more concentrated blob of color then it will spread out and uh, yeah so where I'm just going through where I think that there needs to be some extra shading so one tip is I mean the eyes they're not um, they're then never outlined um, sometimes you get these uh, women with coal and uh, eyeliner and mascara and in those cases they are a little bit more outlined but with a guy often not outlined um, same with the lips none of the features are outlined often the bottom of the nose does have a, a darker shape uh, the sides of the nose never got an outline I think it's fair to say um, so it's always worth trying to blend your colors out so rather than trying to get an outline as such try and blend it in to the surrounding areas so all of this so far is just a, oh, sorry for the <laughs> the shaking camera uh, this is just using the three four colors uh, and I've a lot of artists try and limit the colors to create a little bit of cohesion within the portrait and I've I actually like this color set actually I like the ultramarine cadmium red and uh, yellow ochre I think you can see that there's a good range I did use a bit of burnt sienna and that helps with ultramarine get a really kind of dark color for the contrasts Uh, the colours that I'm using this, for this video are made by uh, St. Petersburg White Knights um, and they offer a really good value range actually, it's a set of 36. I don't think I paid that much money at all compared to some of the other sort of traditional makes um, and some of the colours that people are using these days like Daniel Smith produces some excellent colours but they're expensive. Um, White Knights, um, all of the colours are quite budged, um, which means you don't need to keep scrubbing, trying to get, um, you know, with water to try and get the colour up. So you need to put a bit of colour, a um, bit of water in, and the colours are already quite ready to use straight away. Um, I'm running out of yellow ochre. And so I try not to use it, <laughs> which, is, which is ridiculous. It's a bit like, you know, saving your clothes for best and then you become too fat to wear them anymore. <laughs> so I don't know what I'm saving my yellow ochre for. So I did use it for this, but I am. Um, I'm going to order another pan, a pan of yellow. This come usually in pans or they come in tubes. Uh, the pans are those little square uh, things that you get in the um, watercolor sets. Uh, you can get tubes, usually in sort of 5 mils or 14 mils. They cost more. Here, I'm putting down cling film. And you can't really see the other. I thought he's had some really lovely creases in his scarf. To get in creases quite nicely is by using cling film, in fact. So you put down a really wet wash. Um, and then you go over with cling film and um, wait for it to dry. And it creates these sort of little crinkles so it did, did, did do something you can't see it very well there but um yeah next time i'll i'll zoom in if i do something like that so yeah here i'm just adding an extra some creases you can see where i've tried to lift the color where the thumb is and it blue thumb it annoys me anyway you live and learn and uh, this is a good exercise in correcting uh mistakes see eh?
was just adding some extra creases going around some of the, the crease effects that I got from the cling film. I still want to get a bit of more contrast down here on the scarf and in his jumper. Every now and then you can see a little whiz of the hair dryer as I am. Um, I don't have patience to wait for it to dry. Generally it is nicer to wait for things to dry rather than use the hair dryer because it does tend to blow the colours around a little bit. Um, I've got two brushes that I'm using here. This is my favourite one. It's a sword brush. It's just um, a cheap one from uh, Hobbycraft, which is a store in the UK. This is uh, one by Dela Rowney. And then the other brush I'm using is a, uh, I think it's a larger synthetic round brush. <clears throat> and it holds a lot of water. It's not ideal for beginners actually because um, it holds a lot of water and a lot of colour and it's quite difficult con to control. Um, so I don't prefer the smaller synthetic brushes. And uh, they're much better for learning anyway. So here I was trying to add in um, a few extra little highlights. I added, um, and the highlights are done with white gouache. And so I think that about sums up the video. Um, so thank you very much for watching it. If you've got any questions um, or any ideas for future videos, then please do let me know. And please like and subscribe. Thank you.